Good morning, everybody. And uh, it's 4.15 a.m. here in Iowa, my time. So, uh, welcome to my channel. Please hit the like button and please subscribe. It does help me so much. And share. Please share my videos. Um, this one starts out, I thought that railroad strike was all over. I thought they had come to an agreement. You know, what, about a month ago? Well, maybe not yet. We'll see what happens here. President Joe Biden is once again facing down an enemy that he claimed victory over. But this time it's destructive national railroad strike. The president held a ceremony on September 15th, announcing a major deal to avert the freight lines from shutting down. That, however, now my kids are playing. You're going to hear some disturbance in the back. They're playing. Uh, Four-leggers, that is, not two. <laughs> I got um, three girls and two boys. Two cats and three shy weenies. Yeah. <laughs> They love to play this time of morning, especially when I'm trying to do videos, but whatever. That, however, may prove premature. See, he jumped the gun again for patting himself on the back. I like to pat him on the back. One of the unions that needed to sign off on the agreement flatly rejected it, throwing open the possibility of a crippling strike as a struggling nation heads into the holiday season for shopping. Now, sure, why not? What else could we ask for? I don't like getting screwed on the holidays, financially. The country's third largest freight railroad workers union, the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division of the Team Teamsters, uh, the BMWED, Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division. Boy, that's a long name, isn't it? It's a good thing they abbreviated it. <laughs> Voted 56% to 43% on Monday to reject the Biden negotiated five-year contract. The terms include a 24% pay raise within two years to an average wage of 110000 a year. A major sticking point for the rank and fire, however, was the single paid sick day per year. The union wanted 15. Well, if you got the flu, you don't get over that in a day. The major sticking point for the rank and file, however, was a single paid sick day per year. Well, my goodness. Three days I could understand, possibly. Hmm. BMWED President Tony D. Caldwell explained that his members are discouraged and upset. Well, I can't blame them. Over what they perceived as the low regard companies have for their value. See, it hurts. Does Biden ever feel hurt? Not in my book. And I don't think his kid does either. Over what they perceive as low regard companies for their value. He added the quality of life issues revolving around paid time off, especially for sickness, are key. That's right. The vote represents a major setback for the Biden administration and returns of unenacted specter nationwide strike headed into the holiday season. Several key cabinet members were directly involved in negotiations and the agreement was T-O-U-T-E-D again, touted as a breakthrough. Okay, we'll say touted. I'm happy with it. <laughs> there will be no actual strike until at least November 19th due to the required cooling off period. You know, because I have trouble pronouncing a lot of these words and uh, names, you know, and stuff like that that we're not used to using in our territories. But... <laughs> I don't know why. I don't even know what the touted as a breakthrough means. Couldn't they find a, a better word? T-O-U-T-E-D? Whatever. Experts believe that a deal will ultimately reach 
reach, be reached before the November deadline, but one that failure to avert a strike would be crippling both, well, of course, economically and politically, for the administration. The president has long touted himself as the most pro-union chief executive in the nation's history, as showing by his kicking off his 2020 presidential campaign at a union hall in Pittsburgh. Laboring organizations contributed tens of millions to his election effort. I wish somebody would give me a million, don't you? <laughs> Thus, having the freight railroad workers walk off the job before the holidays would be a huge blow. Even with potential strike delayed until after the midterms, the economic impact would have dire consequences for the White House credibility. Boy, you can say that again. My, oh my, oh my. And I said in another video I was going to quit saying that. Or I just don't know. <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't know what else to say over how our country's being ran, except it's got to be stopped. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. Trump Insider reveals how January 6th panel subpoena could backfire. The House January 6th committee resumes its public hearings this week and made news when members unanimously voted to subpoena former President Donald Trump for testimony under oath about last year's riot on Capitol Hill. He didn't even know it was going to happen. What is he going to testify to? That his words created it and he's responsible then for the words that come out of his mouth? I did another video earlier, earlier, months ago on that, when this happened. You know, I mean, watch what you say. But they took his words, the rioters, just in their head. And they made the decision. He didn't. They did. Oh, these stupid people just doing everything they can to down Trump. He was the best president we've had probably since Lincoln. <sighs> While the Democratic-led panel had spent a massive amount of time and other resources in its bid to portray Trump as somehow culpable, C-U-L-P-A-B-L-E, culpable, culpable for the actions of his supporters that day. One source close to the former president recently revealed that the latest move might backfire. I mean, anybody with common sense can't believe that just because words came out of his mouth, the writer said, oh boy, he wants us to raid the place. Let's get ready. That's not the way it happened. Oh, I want to, I want to use a naughty word here. Ooh, I want to use a naughty word, but I won't. Mm. The insider said that Trump loves the idea of testifying, going on to provide a brief rundown of what he might reveal if he decides to comply with a subpoena. Well, you know, Trump, I got some advice. You take that subpoena and you go for it. And you remind those people that you're not the one that ordered the riot. All you did was speak in a speech. Your words did not tell these rioters in their head that you wanted them to riot. They took that upon themselves from your words, possibly, but I don't even think that. I think this was planned way before that. Speech, even. That's what I'd tell Trump to do. I'd tell him, take that damn subpoena and stand up and call their brains out. As Fox News reported, the source said that he would likely talk about how corrupt the election was. No, he, would, he needs to leave that out. Forget about the presidency. 
and the election. Forget all about that. His main concern now would be that he did not order those rioters to do what they did. They took it upon themselves. He is not guilty. Ooh, maybe I better become a lawyer. Hmm, wow. I surprise myself sometimes. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Talk about how corrupt the election was, how corrupt the committee was, and how House Speaker Nancy Pelosi did not call upon the National Guard that Trump strongly recommended for her to do three days earlier, on January 3rd of 21. Trump weighed in on the development directly in his own Fox News interview, calling the committee a hoax, a sham, and a partisan witch hunt, which is a con continuation of the witch hunt that has gone on since the great day of our country that I came down the golden escalator with our first future, with our future first lady. He accused the House panel of having no case, no rating, suggesting that its members have to try this to get publicity. As for the scope of the panel's investigation, Trump complained that members never covered the important subject of the election fraud or why Pelosi and mayor of D.C. did not call up on the National Guard. Trump asked for the National Guard and nobody did anything about it. Asserting that they didn't do their job, he added, I believe the crowd was going to be bigger, just my instinct. And they had the chance to call up the National Guard the three days before January 6th. And, they, and if they did, January 6th would have been a very different day. But they didn't do it. They were derelict in their duties. The former president called out the committee's two Republican members, Representative Liz Cheney, Republican of Wyoming. We've had a little deal about Liz, ain't we? <laughs> In last night's video, or I should say early last night's AM videos. <laughs> and Adam Kissinger by asserting that they have been thrown out of the party. Cheney lost her primary election earlier this year, and Kingsinger opt against seeking another term in, King in Congress. While Trump has not indicated whether he plans to comply with the subpoena, he pointed criticism of its members and Democratic Party leadership in general might be enough to completely upend the narrative that his critics have tried to sell in the nearly two years since January. Let me know what you think. You know, everybody's got their own opinion. They have a right to those opinions. As far as I know, we're kind of still a free country. You know, but watch your words. That's what my other video that I made on this subject is. Watch your words. I'll be back. God bless you. And you are a blessing.